So, hello, welcome everybody. My name is Andrew James Oriens. I go by my initials, AJ. You can call me either. Either work just fine. If you have questions, go ahead and just ask them. I'd be happy to take any and every one you got. So, to begin, uh, let me just tell you just the smallest amount about myself. I work at a company called TechSmith Corporation. It's located in Michigan. Michigan is part of the United States. It's the, it's the state shaped like a mitten. There's two peninsulas, if anybody's um, curious. There's both an upper and a lower peninsula. Peninsula just means three of the four sides surrounded by water. And I work on a video editor program. Who here has heard of Camtasia Studio? I got a few hands. They might be a little bit more popular, known from Snagit. Any hands? Anybody know Snagit? Couple. All right, well, that, that's where I work. They're headquartered right there in Michigan. Uh, here's a picture, right, right there it is. And I've been there since 2006. We're here to talk today about the cons keyword. It did come from C, it does exist in C, and there's really just two main usages of it as a type qualifier, as well as a member function qualifier. And for those of you uh, very advanced and up-to-date with your C++ knowledge, there is const expert, has been since 2011, as well as there's even a, the const eval keyword. Though there might be one or two slides talking about that. For the most part, I'm just gonna stick to the const keyword. One question you might have came to this talk just wondering is, could, could you have wrote a program just without even using the const keyword whatsoever? And by that, I mean, of course, the standard library is gonna use const. And of course, maybe some third-party components that you would use would definitely use const. But I mean, no, your program, could you have just been like, you know, I, I don't know if I like to use const. I don't know if I need to. Could you write a program? The answer is easily, you sure could. You'd be amazed at how easily it is that to, to use, not use the const keyword. That being said, I look at code when I see code that doesn't use the const keyword the same way I would look at it if it didn't use the override keyword, if it overridden a virtual method, or if, I don't know, one of many other things. If you don't make private member variables, I would look at that code like it's legacy code. I myself would be embarrassed to show you code that doesn't use the const keyword at all in it. So uh, I would definitely use it. Now, should you use it yourselves if you were to make a new program? Obviously, it depends on what you're trying to do. If uh, you're just trying to use Compiler Explorer and make a simple, quick little program that its lifetime is measured in the seconds, probably not necessary. But it, it is one of those things that uh, I would. It's just. By default, a project will have a certain warning level to try to get you to get in the door. But, but at some point, I think it is in your interest to increase that warning level, to use the const keyword, to use some of the other tools in your toolbox. Then I, I reckon some of you might be wondering, if I use const, next thing you know, I'm adding const everywhere. It starts a spiral from if, if I just change one little method, next thing I know, my, my entire pull request, my entire complete set of changes is now in the 15, 20 files. And that hopefully will be the case. I, uh, I actually think that that's a good thing. Uh, at some point it does simmer down, but yes, that, that is the case. And then I do wanna mention, like if you have a program that's not currently using const, should you? And I would say, yes, you should. It's, uh, not the easiest, it's really more of a, a people problem in that you, you talk to your team members and you explain, hey, let's, let's talk about this. Let's see what, what, where we have problems on it and we'll go from there. So should you use const at all? Let me just tell you what the core guidelines say. Yes. <laughs> uh, in particular, I was telling you it's a tool in your toolbox, just like private member variables, functions, you name it. Not every tool should you use just because it exists, but this is one you definitely should. I don't believe it's that hard to use correctly. I do admit that you might have been taught in such a way where it, I don't know, some, something's lacking, or you could have been just 
not taught well at all on it, and it just gives you an error, and errors aren't the most fun. It does help readability. I'll show some examples of that. Give me just a moment. And then, yes, uh, it is possible. I'll show you an example where you might have some extra lines of code just because you start to use cons, but it's, it's not that frequent. So for just because this is an introductory uh, you know, beginner level, is let me at least make sure you all know what const is. Imagine I have a, this very simple type point right here, and I have a const instance of it right, by doing that right there. That certainly means I cannot modify that object. So if I did attempt to assign into a member variable or try to completely write over the whole instance of the variable, I would get at compilation time an error. And subsequently, if I had a function that took by reference a non-const reference, uh, I couldn't even pass the object to it, even if it didn't actually modify that constant reference. The fact that it could, it would stop me, and stop me right away it would. So when I was first talking about uh, you could write a program without the const keyword, one, one place where you almost would have to use the const keyword is if you had a string literal, meaning just a double quoted string, uh, you, you'll actually might be a little bit surprised. So all of the three main popular compilers require you, and I'll put that in air quotes, the, the word compile, because he, here they are. And you'll, you'll see one straight up doesn't compile it. And though the other two do compile with the const uh, keyword omit it from this constant character pointer, the string literal. Using words like forbids it is really saying no, no, you, no, you cannot. It, don't, don't do that anymore. Uh, yes, compilers can permit things, and, and that they do. There are things that they should really stop permitting and make it not be the case anymore. But don't worry about that particular. Uh, you certainly can. The question was, is you could treat warnings as errors, and you, I, I do in my program. It's very appreciated that these warnings are there to help you. So const character pointer, not, not as big deal, because in case you don't already know, you can use a standard string. Standard string, you just pass it a string literal. You got a string from that point on. I, I do want to just mention that if you find yourself intermixing the two, uh, standard string does have heap allocation. So if you are willing to watch this nice little animation here, where imagine I start off with a constant character pointer. I make a standard string, there might be a heap allocation. I do something, whatever it may be, and then I decide I'm gonna call another layer deep. It's just called the same thing for the animation purposes, and then convert it from my standard string back to a character pointer. The, the cycle would just keep continuing, and each, each time I make a standard string, that's a potentially another heap allocation. Not, not a big deal. Like, like I'm saying, it's not, not, not important because there's standard string view, for instance. There's a standard string. There's all, all kinds of things if, if that's a concern of yours. Const, I, I just want to briefly mention you can use it in a template parameter. Of course, it depends what the template decides to do with it. Uh, it could have. Uh, cast it away, did some sort of a remove const, but in the case of a standard shared pointer, it keeps it as const, meaning you can only call const methods with a const uh, templated st standard shared pointer. Let me just tell you about const cast. Uh, for the most part, you probably all know it, but there is this one gotcha in there that was uh, news to me, so I'm gonna fill you in. To start off with, is uh, you have a variable, and then of course you can have an alias to that variable of some sort, maybe even a constant alias as, as you see pictured. And then though you cannot change the uh, constant reference because it's constant, and as you remember, constant is a way of saying no, no immutability, or sorry, just immutability, meaning you cannot change it. 
So you can const away the const part, giving you the ability to modify it. But the kicker that, that uh, I want to tell you about, what, what, I, uh, what I didn't know some years ago, but now I know, there's actually some undefined behavior if you're not careful. If something originally started off as const, and then you, um, you can make aliases that continue to be const, you can still const cast it. That, that part's the OK part, const casting, even if it is const originally. But, and, and this is important, if, uh, if you then decide to do an assignment, that could be, it, it is undefined behavior. The reasoning, I think, is it's possible that variable could have been located in memory in a different, um, in a read-only area of memory. And by changing that, you're going into undefined behavior territory. Not a good idea, anywho, to use const cast. Uh, if, if this is your code, just remove const. What, you, you know, you're clearly saying, I will and do intend on modifying this variable. Don't, don't make it const if, if you actually intend on modifying it. But there are cases, uh, I, I can only really think of this one that came up. We used a third party software. It's called Microsoft Direct Show. Does that ring a bell to anybody? Okay, not, not too many. It's, it, it is um, 20 plus years ago that that code we're using. Hopefully at some point it'll be removed. And the gist is, Something takes one of those string literals. Uh, I, it, it is a little wrapped inside of a macro called name, but, but the gist is still, we, we have a, a string literal. And then ultimately, the, this constructor here takes the character pointer, but without const. And that being said, we, we, we find ourselves with a couple of choices. Do we try to change that code? Which we actually could. We're, we'd be maintaining, therefore, some other third party's code? Or do we do const cast? Luckily, we could peek and see that it was not a problem. And so we, we did const cast. It's, remember, it's only a problem if that code then decides to modify the variable. If it, if it just uh, utilizes it, makes a copy of it, that's fine. Good question. That, that question was, uh, how can you be sure that this code does not actually modify a variable that you just did const cast? And you, you cannot. I'm sure there's probably some tools. In this particular case, uh, these, these were called the base filters. It's uh, something related to direct show. And there, we did have the source code. And so we can actually and do build it. But normally, no, you would just get a header and some static library that you're linking with, and there's really no way to know for sure. And so uh, if, if you're ever uncertain, for the case of these um, eight or so characters, we could have just uh, did like a string copy and copied them into a non-const buffer or, or something like that to it, probably a global buffer just, just to be safe. I don't know who here either knows the Rust language. Uh, this is the only slide on a couple other languages or the C Sharp language. Uh, let me start off with the Rust language. Is by default, immutability is on. It's kind of in the equivalent to C++ as if you wrote const, even though you didn't write const. There, there is a const keyword in Rust, but I'm not, wasn't going to go into that. Just if anybody's curious, without actually explicitly saying mutable, it's read-only. And then uh, this came about in the suggestion, this is some real code. Because there's a, an upcoming loop, the idea was, hey, let's, let's take this, that variable and let's just add the const keyword to it to make it so you feel really certain that it cannot possibly have changed. Uh, unfortunately, and, and it might be a little bit hard to see, but the, the const keyword means a little something different in C Sharp. In this case, it wasn't just trying to mean read only. Instead, it was saying, no, it needs to be known at compile time. What about a, a new type of some sort? I mentioned string view. Uh, C++ does have types like uh, 
const iterator, for example, for those of you who know, uh, it, it could have been possible following, say, C Sharp's book in, in a way to make like a, a read only vector or a read only container type or other types. Uh, the more I think about it, I, I, uh, I really think C is in the correct here, where just add the const keyword. If you don't want to modify something, have a const instance of it. Don't, don't try to make entire types to prevent or limit you from modifying an object. And so I, I did contemplate it. I gave it a lot of thought. Maybe it could have been a base class and that standard vector could inherit off of it. Um, no, it, it's not necessary of, of any sort. So I like const better. Okay, so I don't know if, uh, how, how much you all have used uh, the const variable, but you might be wondering, can I make const member variables, meaning uh, part of your class? You sure can, right? There's a, a very simple example where I added const right there on that member variable. It's important to note the assignment must be done in certain places. And so a constructor and destructor and uh, some other special member functions are really not const nor uh, non-const. They're they have the special ability where they can assign to a member variable. But it's important to note, they can only assign to the member variable in the initializer list. Had I, uh, inside the body right here of this constructor, tried to do the assignment, that would not have been acceptable. Uh, so far, everybody doing good? Correct, yeah, it's, it's not actually assignment, it's, uh, it's initialization that's occurring. I don't know if anybody's wondering this, but if, if, there's, a, if there's a place you could make a variable const, should you? I, I've actually heard some people say, just make everything const. The compiler will let you know if something could not be const. Uh, I, I will diverge a little to some, some of that main thinking on that. Uh, so certainly I will make things const that I intend and I deliberately want to be const, but I, I would not go everywhere and do that. So what, what I have pictured is just a small code sample. That code sample is a test. Uh, I, I do encourage you all if, uh, if you write a large program to have tests of whatever type you'd like, whether they're performance tests, unit tests, integration tests, but it, it's a great idea. So in this case, I have an expected value. So upon doing the stuff in the middle there, ultimately, finally, I should be able to call something and then expect this exact value out. And so, I could have, and I would even say should have made that expected variable const because there's no reason it should ever change. That being said, it wasn't const. And if you find yourself in such a situation where you're the code reviewer for a fellow uh, team member, it, it's up to you. Like, you would be in the right saying, hey, let, let's make that variable const because it should be and it, it's the right thing to do. But it, it is. Also, uh, I use the term small potatoes, meaning it's not the biggest deal. Like you can live with yourself if, uh, if you do let a few cons slide, but uh, uh, that's ultimately a decision you'll have to make. It's in your hands. All right, now let's start talking about some of the second usage. Say you have an instance and it's const, but it's your class. It's not uh, just some, some variable. No, nope. imagine you wrote this my object type and you have a const version of your object. Well, what, what, what can you do with it? I mean, you, you can clearly see as soon as you try to call a method such as uh, this get value method, you'll find yourself in getting a compilation error. 
Uh, even though that get value, it's not actually modifying the class, it's just returning a value. It's not about what it actually does, it's about what it says it could do or what it doesn't say it could do. In this case, uh, right here between the uh, body or if the body's in an implementation file, it, it would be here in the declaration and in the definition is where you would specify the keyword const to designate that this method does not modify state. Here it is with the, uh, the const keyword. And so uh, the, when you do have const, it only calls const methods. Um, you, you can of course call static methods. Static methods for those of you wondering, does not require an instance of the class, uh, just, just technicality there. And you cannot be both static and const at the same time. Now, for those of you somewhat familiar with the const expert keyword, it does not mean const. Uh, I will show you that, that there is some meaning that where it does mean const, but in general, if I, if I were to have const expert right here, it, it's not marked const. And so if I have this const object, as you can see right here, and I call that method, I will at compilation time get a failure. Uh, it, yes, we have a question. Yeah, that's because the const expert here is uh, uh, qualifying the return value. Yes, that is true. The const expert is really specifying the return value. Uh, it, well, it, it's more, I actually, I'd like to think of it as specifying the, the whole method, but yes, it, you know, the, the body of the function is also very much related. But yes, he, he is right uh, that it, it's not, uh, yeah, it's still not marked const. Uh, let, let me go ahead and show you uh, an example here. In this particular case, I have uh, two methods. One is marked const, and the other not, both of them are marked uh, with const expert on, on this return value. And if I have a const expert version of instance of that object, when I do call the method on it, what method am I calling? Uh, anybody want to take a guess? Will, will this program return five or three? All right, I'm, I'm hearing good good number of fives, and that is correct. Uh, just just it, anybody said three. Um, just that even though I don't have the const keyword right here, the on an instance variable, my const expert does imply const. So, so I believe, I, let, let me repeat the question, make sure I got all of it. The question is, do you need to quantify uh, this return is const expert? Is that, oh no, no, uh, I, that was not necessary at all. This was just for the sake of this demonstration to show you that even if the variable is const expert, uh, that that has extra meaning. So even if you mark the methods it's const expert, that uh, still didn't meet the requirements that the, the actual method itself must have been marked as const. Does that help you? And then I, I believe I did see a second question. Maybe not. Can you find a signature? Like if uh, I had virtual function, which uh, one derived class would return a const expert and the other, and the other one not, is it possible or? Uh, the question was, could I have a couple of, uh, let, let me see if I got this correctly. Is, the signature? is const expert part of the signature? It is. Uh, related to the signature, but it's not uh, related to the signature like const is related to the signature. So I mean, like if it's part of the signature, then can I cannot have to derive one with the const expert and one with, without it. Oh, function, okay. Function, for example. Yes, yeah. So uh, for, for those of you familiar, uh, the, you, you have like the method name and of course the parameters and if something differed by be either the number of parameters or what parameters it takes, uh, it, it's, th that's the signature part. The return type could have been completely different. Even if the, the two member functions are named the same thing, even if it takes the same number of arguments, in this case zero, uh, 
This const here is part of the signature, meaning by having that makes it a completely separate uh, member function than the one without it. Uh, for anybody curious, there's also a volatile keyword, but we'd be getting to some interesting territory there. Uh, so if you ever hear the term CV qualified, that they're talking about const as well as volatile qualified. So uh, does that help answer your question? So con contester is not part of the mangled name. It's not part of the signature. Return value is not part of the signature. Contester relates to the return value. So yes, uh, I, I believe yes, the const expert is really just trying to say the, the body uh, must meet the const expert requirement. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up a compiler explorer with you afterwards if you're up for it. But uh, no, I, I don't think uh, it, it's only const and volatile and the name and the parameter. So no, I don't believe that const expert it created a different signature. So correct. So theory could have a virtual function in which in, uh, which in the one drive class it will be returned in const expert, and in the second drive class it will not be a const expert. Uh, so yes. It's not part of the signature. Yeah, so it's not part of the signature, but I believe if you did derive off of a virtual and const expert, you'll probably want to have uh, to, to match it, e even if it's not part of the signature, in order to override it. Okay. Okay. Uh, he here's a case where uh, I have const expert and ju just pretty much just like the last one. And it does imply const. So if you didn't put const right here, you do find yourself in error territory. Let, let's actually talk about error territory. Uh, yes, I had a question. The question was, could a method that was marked as const expert, just like this right here, not const itself, could that have modified its own private member variables and its various member state? It should be able to, yes. So why is that value of const expression uh, method is marked const? Good question. The, the question for those of you wondering is, what's the value of marking a method const expert if it's not const? Uh, the main reason is you can use static assert when you have things marked as const expert. So meaning you can, at compilation time, verify something will behave in a very particular certain way, even if it can modify state. So let's talk about some compilation issues. And these are compilation issues that actually got hit out there you know, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the field. So this one is small. I can uh, increase the size for you. It's, it's a whole thread of conversation. But it, it starts off, there's this method, and it's not marked as const. And the question was, should it have been const? It, it looks like it's not modifying state. Add that const keyword to it. And, and uh, the, the programmer who responds, he's a very uh, talent, talented and smart individual. And Obviously, his first thought was, okay, I'll add that const keyword. He does that. And then, no, no dice. It, it fails to compile. Uh, if, if you read a little bit further into the conversation, really all it had to do with it, it just needed to specify. And uh, really, if it just used the auto keyword, it would have been just fine, just because the auto keyword would have done the appropriate correct thing in this case. But because we didn't use the auto keyword, it did create a compilation compilation value at one point, and the, the gist for, for anybody can see that, I know it's not the, the biggest, in fact, it's quite small at all, uh, just says use a const underscore iterator right there. Let, let me show you an example that's even easier to read and you can see. The square bracket operators on, say, a map, they, they do, preserve, uh, do double duty. They work as both assignment as well as reading of, from a map. So for instance, say I have this member function and it's marked as const and I'm only just looking at it. I have no intent on actually modifying that map. But what you might not realize is right here, 
if he does not actually exist in this map, it actually will make an entry in that map. That, that might be lost, uh, you know, or not known to some of you, but that is, is the case. The compiler, it catches that. It will let you know, it'll take you right to that line. What happens next is where it becomes most important. You, you have choices. Maybe the easiest way is to just remove const and you're able to build. I'm glad I'm seeing some shaking of the heads because no, that, that's not the case. Uh, you might first think, maybe I can, uh, can check for that. Maybe I can just add an if statement first and just verify that that map does or does not contain that key. And if it doesn't, I return. So I'm out of there if that map did not contain it. So therefore, I could not have modified the map if the, if the key value did not exist in the map. No, that, that's still not going to work. And, and it's still not going to work because e even though this could not actually happen where a key value did not exist in the map, it's not about that. It's about this adds the ability to do a non-const operation. And so though it wouldn't actually, it doesn't matter. This right here is a non-const way of writing, writing it. So multiple ways you can fix it, but let me first take a question. You're exactly right, uh, if I may repeat. Uh, with threading and concurrency, if you yeah, two threads, it, it is quite possible uh, one of them did not find the, the key value pair. And whereas, you know, and it's, it's already, um, you, you know, it could be different code, but, but it, it's not thread safe either, that it could have now made such an entry or did something such that another thread now would have actually got further along uh, in that code path and would have done a non-const operation. So yes, you're exactly correct. Uh, the way I probably would go about fixing it is the at member function, there's a const and a non-const version. And by using the at member function, that would resolve the compilation failure. I wouldn't need to have this uh, early return check that I have uh, in, in that case. I, I probably still might keep it. it it's kind of nice. Uh, it obviously would depend if, if I ex actually expect people calling this member function with keys that would not exist. Uh, correct. At, the way it works is if uh, the map does not contain an item with that key, it would throw an exception. That is correct. Uh, you could catch it, but you know, uh, I believe the best practice is if I uh, is to actually check a map if something exists or not, and then uh, behave accordingly. So let, let me talk to you about some uh, opinionated things, and you you tell me uh, if if you agree with me or not on this. So there's this member function, and it, and it starts off with word find, and it. And this is real code, just by the way. I, I know it's probably not the best, but you give it some sort of a key, and it's finding something, and it was not marked as const. Well, at code review time, we have a couple of choices. Say nothing, or suggest, hey, could this or should this have been a const method? Well, the person who wrote this code contemplates. They, they think about it, and they go, if, if I change this method, I have an interface. And an interface just means a you know, pure virtual method. It's, it's, a, it's a term to just allow you to swap out implementations. And so if they did make it const, they'd also need to change in the interface. And they felt like that had some sort of a restriction that now any and everybody who implements this interface, they now must make that exact method be const. So, uh, ultimately, if anybody's curious, I don't believe this method is uh, marked as const even now in the, in the code. But what, what do I think and what, what, what do, you, do you guys agree with me? So I feel like this, this is software, not hardware, meaning uh, it can change. If, uh, if the interface and the method itself don't actually modify state, I like that idea of making this a const interface method. 
And if in the future, if that ends up not being the case, we can, we can remove the keyword cons if it makes sense, or maybe we can blow away the class and create a whole new class or something along those lines. But uh, at least in the, the short term, I probably would have added it. Not, not a hill necessarily that, that it was that important to prevent this code from getting executed or getting merged in. It, it provided value, and so uh, it, it's in there right now. But let's talk about ABI, if I may. So th this is something uh, that, that is actually quite important. It stands for Application Binary Interface. And so if you had an interface or an object and you either add the const keyword on a method or take away the const keyword on a me method, does that mean you need to recompile both your code uh, and the library you're interfacing with? Short answer is yes. You are, are right for anybody nodding. Uh, but, but just if anybody's curious, I'll, I'll explain here in just a couple of seconds. Is imagine you construct an object in one location inside your executable, and then you pass along that object to some sort of a shared library, as my example is is they need to be able to agree on what this object is that you passed. If you made certain modifications to it, even if you just added additional things to it, it's quite possible it's changed fundamentally in a way that you could not just pass such an object. And so to try to minimize such problems, it's a great idea to make sure things are built with the same compiler if you can, uh, certainly, a lot of the same settings. Don't try to intermix debug and release mode. Don't try to turn on certain optimizations on one side and explicitly turn them off on another side. Just, you know, any and all of that. So, uh, my, my simple example I use is two strings that if I, uh, strings certainly not written like this, but if it has these two member variables and they are swapped in order, those really, even though it's named the exact same thing and assume it's in the same exact scope, that really messes with the class. One object would treat a class in a certain way with the length of how much data in one uh, location in memory, one offset, if you will, whereas uh, to the receiver or whomever would, would you know, think that's where the data is and it, it would just get corrupted doing such a thing. That's not const, that's true. Let me, let me jump to const, that is true. So uh, you, you'll probably get even warnings in your code if you utilize certain types. Um, if, if you do actually know what you're doing, you might find yourself uh, suppressing them. Pragma warning is, is a way that, that we do suppress away a warning. In this case, there's certain types that it's basically telling you that it, it could become a problem. So. Uh, and just, yes, uh, try, try to use the same compiler with the same settings if, if you're going to share objects amongst uh, other classes. But to cons, let's, uh, let's get to that. Uh, to answer that question is there's this wonderful link that goes into all the details. And uh, here's the answer. But, but what I was saying uh, just a moment ago is the answer is yes. If you either add or remove the cons, uh, keyword to a method, it will break uh, application binary interface. Why? Uh, the question was why? Between the signatures, different function name actually behind the scenes. And, and the answer was it is different signatures, and it is that uh, being a const method, it is um, the you can. Think of when you do add cons, uh, I don't know if anybody is familiar with name mangling that the compilers do. Uh, it, so being that it changes the signature, it would be different mangled name. And then there's a high likelihood if you're a different mangled name that, that that could put in a completely different location relative to the... Uh, sorry, what was that? Uh, Oh, you're, you're talking about if you were to link with uh, a class? Uh, yes, it would, well, it would certainly fail at compile and link time. 
I was just thinking if you were to build a dynamic object uh, one or you know a few moments ahead of a building an executable and they have them talk to each other and pass objects and then adding cons there. So you would have already beat the compilation and not have any compilation issues, but uh, you, certainly yes, if you just had one executable, you uh, add or remove cons, rebuild the whole thing. Uh, well, if you say didn't rebuild the whole thing, you would have compilation time failures. Probably you're right at linkage time if you're able to trick the compiler in such a way. It, so, so you might be wondering, when is it a good idea to make uh, member functions const? Certainly, you know, if, if it's not changing state, you, you should make it const. Uh, not, not always. You might find yourself uh, disagreeing to that, and I'll show some examples here in a moment. Because certainly something will compile as const, or certainly will compile without const, but that doesn't make it right of any sort. I feel you should be deliberate. If uh, you totally intend this, this method now and in the future will not modify its state, then mark it const. So for instance, getters of some sort or some sort of a checking thing. So like get value, get size, get something. I don't intend on it modifying state. Is something empty? Is something selected? Is something to me, none of those sound like it needs to modify the state, and there's a high likelihood I'll make it const. And then there's these sort of ambiguity areas, such as create something, retrieve something, write something, where it might actually be not changing the state of a class, but for that, so I probably would not make it const. Uh, it might, it's just, it's not too clear to me whether it should or should not. So let's use a factory method as an example. For those of you who have not used that pattern, it's a great pattern. It gives you the ability to take a lot of your setup for the construction of an object and sort of move the responsibility that it does elsewhere. Even if you only have your factory create just a single instance, it, it's a great idea. So should you therefore make a method, a factory, the create method on the factory pattern const. It, it might not actually modify state. What, what would you do, actually? Anybody want to tell me what, what they would do? You, sir. Maybe the list of the ones that would uh, religious arguments I would. I agree. Uh, he, he said uh, he would. Uh, well, he, you said uh, a few things there, but yes. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. I, I summarized it quite a bit there for you, but yes, that, that is uh, a great point. What, what about draw methods? Uh, clearly, if you're drawing something, aren't, aren't you sort of changing that something that uh, you're, you're changing the pixels on the screen? You're changing somewhere. Uh, I think this goes to what the gentleman was talking about, but uh, you know, who w would you make your draw methods const? It probably won't, doesn't change state. Uh, I, I am seeing some shaking of the heads, but just just a couple. Uh, I, I don't know if I have the correct answer on that. So no, I, I don't think I probably would myself, just because if I, I I'm probably likely if I'm drawing something. I might even do some sort of caching, to which I'll talk about that in just, just a couple of moments. Uh, I view it a lot the same way as, what if I had either free functions you know, that are not part of a class that I call, and, or like, like you can see right here, it, I have this class, I have a, a member function, it's calling some free function, it just happens to have some namespaces in there. Should that be const? It, it certainly it compiles with this right there marked as const, but I can tell from the name that I'm doing, it's called re delete file. Like it's clearly saying I'd like to make a modification. 
Sure, this modification is not to its internal state of this particular class. And sure, this modification is uh, you know, to your file system or something totally external to the class. I, myself, if anybody's curious, would not make it cons. Would make it static. You would make it static, he would. Uh, and, and yes, you actually could make that a static method right there, because it, it actually, this, this has no member variables. I could still see a case where I might have a, a member variable, say if I was wrapping f open and f close. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, just calling f open, I, I think I could still get away with doing that or a similar method and, and still be cons. But yes, uh, you could have made that a static method. I hope, hope that answers. Deal with the class member of yeah. Yeah, to, to his point is if uh, your method doesn't actually utilize any member variables, make it static. Uh, the variables, also the disk, like it could access the function which, is, which does access the member. So. Okay, yeah. Is, it definitely should not access any member. Yes, yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so if you're not really accessing any members, uh, you you're really are trying to say it's a static method, so yes. Uh, did, do you have a question, sir? No, I just wanted to add, uh, unless you're managing some uh, state, there is no point to manage this, member, uh, this function as a member function. If you have a state to manage, you make it a member function, and then it can be fast because it's managing a state. And if it's not managing a state, and it's stateless, you make it static. Uh, so there, I, I don't see any way how this can be possible. Okay, the, this guy uh, says th he doesn't see any reason how this even could be const. Uh, I, I had some cases where we, we like to use interfaces even if it doesn't always make sense. But yes, you are exactly right. Like It's not needed. Don't, don't add uh, extra boilerplate, extra code if you don't need to, and, and we do. I, I'm sad to say sometimes they're, they're, we would make an interface and we would possibly write such a method such that we could do mocking and various testing that we would do. And, and in that particular case, we could find ourselves in a case where we might add or remove the keyword const, but uh, agreed. I think we can both agree. It doesn't need to be const. It shouldn't be const. It probably should have been static all along, but yes, it should not be cons. Okay. There's a keyword called mutable. If you did make a const member function, you therefore cannot modify the state of that class. Now, that, that's fine and all, except uh, there are times where you might need to or desire to modify the state of that class. Well, sure, you could just remove the const keyword and just say it's not const. And I do agree for anybody wondering, const and uh, mutable sort of go, go against each other. But, you know, I, I have some cases that, that uh, I have it, my three cases I think of when I think of really good use cases for the mutable keyword. So the first case is locking. So to, uh, I forgot who exactly asked it or was mentioning about uh, asynchronous code or threading of some sort, is that if you had a mutex and you need to lock it, well, that's a non-const operation. So if, if you support threads, which many programs do support threads in many ways, I don't think you should all of a sudden just remove all your const from everything, everywhere, no. Uh, I think the mutable is a really good example of a place to add the mutable keyword. What that therefore means is inside of a const method, you can lock the mutex. You can make such a modifying change inside of a const member function. Another place is logging. Uh, I certainly like the ability to have some sort of a log of events that have happened throughout a program. And if I'm in a const method, I might actually still want to log that. Adding an entry to a log is modifying something. That's a really clear, good example of a place where I would use the mutable keyword. And the third one, and this is spelled correctly for anybody wondering, is called memoization. Not memorization, but pretty similar. 
Let, let me just tell you what memoization is. Let's use the classic example of Fibonacci. In Fibonacci, for those of you who don't understand that uh, simple example that you always got taught, is you depend on a couple previous results. So it, if, uh, to calculate the Fibonacci of some input number, you have to first calculate the Fibonacci of a couple other numbers and then add them together. The thing you might realize is once you already calculated Fibonacci of n minus 1, in the course of doing so, you already did calculate the Fibonacci of n minus 2. By not storing out that result and retrieving it later, you're doing some of the same work again. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but for when it is a big deal, it can make perfect sense to store the result. So let, let's just show Fibonacci if I were to store the result. It's just a matter of having, say, a map or something like that. And then if I already have it in my map, I can just retrieve that value and just utilize it. And then if I didn't have it in my map, well, let's, let's do the calculations. And in the course of doing the calculations, the map will be invoked. And then once I get the result, I'm going to store that result into the map. So should I ever request the exact same number, assuming I'm not clearing out my map, it's instantaneous. I just, well, practically instantaneous. It's just a quick search uh, of my map to see if it exists. And if so, my answer is right there in the map. Uh, th this is actual real code. It's not too important what the body of these methods are, but, but it is important to note that the bodies really look very similar, so similar, in fact. And the difference is one of them's a const member function, the other is a non-const member function. This does happen if you use const and use const quite a lot. It's not, not too often this doesn't happen. Uh, it's probably more frequent than simply rare, but it, it, is, uh, it does happen. And yes, uh, oftentimes you could get away with uh, having one version call the other version, hopefully the non-const version calling the const version, and such that you can remove uh, duplicated code. But sometimes it's just easier just to basically duplicate one little line of code. It's, it's, sometimes it's, it's OK. It's, it's not so bad. You meant static cast. Sorry, no, no, I, I believe I actually do mean static cast. Uh, so it, you, you don't want like a const method to call a non-const method if you can help it. So uh, no, I, I, and, and using const cast would allow you to do that. No, I, I think uh, I actually would like to call a const method, even though I'm in a non-const area, just such I don't duplicate lines of code type thing. So it's, it's safe really in the, in the fashion of, I can always call const methods, or at least I should be able to, not the other way around. Would static cast do this pointer? Uh, I would use static cast on it to make it be treated my this pointer as const. Either way, I, I'm glad we're having some discussion on them. We'll, we'll make sure we talk about it. But yes, if, if there's any but questions. Sometimes the const method returns a const pointer or something, and, and the non-const method returns a non-const. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you're right. Oh, yeah, you might have to do the return result to change something to what you're talking about. And there, yes, you would have to use a const cast. Good point. Uh, are there any, perf oh, uh, I got a question, but, but I'm just going to take one more question if that's okay, and then we'll so wrap it up. When we const cast the, the, the value back again, is it this itself? Uh, is it the, the case where it's un unheaded? Oh, no, no. Uh, so, or no so, so the question is, I have a this pointer. And since I'm inside, well, actually, I'll tell you what, if you give me two seconds here, I got some slides that I think I'll answer that. First, are there any performance benefits to using the const keyword? No, no, I'm afraid because of both the mutable keyword and the const cast keyword, it makes it so any potential optimizations can be foregone. Uh, it is still important, I do want you to know, do use these keywords. The final keyword, if I 
that, that I'm using right here makes it so you can't inherit from this object again. And there is performance improvements by using this final keyword makes just a, this whole program a couple of statements. Whereas without the final keyword, this would be several more instructions. So I, I still would use the const keyword independent of performance reasons. But, uh, and, and then, so yes, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about const just a little bit more here, and just for a few seconds. Is, it is only about the this keyword. It's that class's state. So though, though this is small, I have a const method here, and I clearly have a, some shared pointer or some sort of a pointer, and I can call a method on that pointer. That pointer is a member variable. It's part of my class. But I can call non-const methods on such a pointer. And, and that might that, that was a little shocking to me because that, that means it well, it no longer means that your object is entirely uh, read-only. Like it ruins some of the meaning of what const really gave you. And so uh, it, it's it's const, but yet it's clearly only trying to do const things. But in the course of doing so, it is calling non-const methods. And it seems like may maybe there should be a const version of those methods. Uh, let, let me show you exactly, but in a much bigger way picture, is imagine if an interface with a non-const method, you would think inside of a const method, and I myself am const, you know, my, my this pointer, when, when this method is called, I'm in a const situation. It, it seems weird to even be able to call such a non-const method, but you can. Uh, const is just about my state, and because it's a pointer or a reference, that's actually somebody else, and, and I am able to make such a call. Uh, I am happy to say, at some point, probably, there, there's an experimental feature called propagate const that maybe that'll that'll change things. So, so that this is small print, but I have a zoomed in version. The, the main gist here is if I call a non-const method, well, he has, if, if that pointer was, instead of just simply a shared pointer, was a, this propagate const, meaning use this propagate const uh, on it, it, it wraps the whole pointer. Then when I did call this test to me in a non inside sorry inside of a const method, it would have called the const version. Uh, here's a zoomed in version of that class. So the gist is if this particular method right here, the const version is called, when it does call test to me, it would call the const version of that method, even if that shared pointer doesn't say uh, a const instance. And I, I would love to see that one day be added just because uh, it would make the meaning of my code mean more that it's counts. Okay, so uh, with that, let, let me just uh, con conclude real quick. I, I only had just a couple of things, but it, it's okay. So uh, that, that's really all I got. If you're interested in anything else, please stick around afterwards. I'd be happy to answer some questions. And uh, thank you very much for coming to my presentation.